AWS Bedrock is AWS's generative AI offering. It's fully managed and it allows us an easy way to generate text, images, and just generally perform AI tasks in our applications. It launched to general availability at the end of last year. And since then, we've been able to use it via the AWS SDK to generate text and images and everything else that we want to do with AI. So in today's video, we're actually going to look at how we can do that using the AWS SDK. Inside some Lambda functions, we're going to deploy using the AWS CDK. So let's jump into it. Before we can actually jump into the CDK and start writing our Lambda functions and generating things with Bedrock, we need to actually pay a quick visit to the AWS dashboard to configure the AI models we want to use. This is because unlike the other AWS services that you'd be used to using like Lambda and DynamoDB, with Bedrock it doesn't come fully configured out of the box. So you get access to the Bedrock dashboard like we can see here, but you don't actually get access to any of the models by default within it. So to enable these, what you need to do is you need to come to the dashboard and you need to go to this model access option at the bottom. You can see here I've already pre-given, pre-applied for and got access to several of the models, including the ones we're going to be using today. Um, but if you wanted to, for the first time, apply for these models, what you'd need to do is you'd need to come to this manage modal access button, and then you'd need to select the ones you want to apply for. So in this case, we could say Lambda 2, and then you just hit save changes. Then after a few moments, you'll get some emails drop in and it will change to this where it says access granted. Once you then have access to these models and they show as access granted in the dashboard, you're then able to use them um, via the SDK, the API, or indeed through the dashboard using their playgrounds tab over here. So for example, let's go to the image tab and then we're going to select the model. Let's say, let's pick the um, stable diffusion model here. And then we can put a prompt in here, which is like um, a developer coding a website. Very uneventful one, but we'll send that off and we'll let that generate. While that's generating, you can see over here on the right, there's actually several things that we can do to customize this. So we can say the prompt stream, the generation step, the seed. I've just left these as default, but of course you can customize as you want. And as you can see here, we now have our image of a developer coding a website created for us. And that is we've now used Bedrock in the dashboard. So now we know we have access to Bedrock. Let's now jump over to the CDK and let's create some code and let's generate some stuff using lambdas. So now we're in VS Code, let's just take a minute and run through the CDK stack that we've got and let's look at what we're going to be building. So first of all, we have a text lambda, which is just going to be generating some text for us and will return it to us inside our terminal in VS Code. But more importantly, and building upon what we did in the browser, we're actually going to be generating an image inside a lambda function and then have it upload to an S3 bucket, which we can then download by visiting the URL it will provide us. So let's just quickly run through these resources. So this is just a pretty standard um, Lambda Node.js function that we've defined here. The most important thing to note here is that we've just given it a policy statement which allows it to access bedrock across all of the resources. Again, this is really just for tutorial purposes. You'd probably want to scope this a bit stricter for a production application. Then we define our S3 bucket with just some settings on it, such as you know destroy it when we remove the stack, make sure it's public, and then just give it the required cause headers and stuff to allow us the public to access the URLs that it has on it. Then finally, we have our image Lambda, which again is just another pretty standard Node.js function for a Lambda. In this case, we have um, also provided the S3 bucket name to it as an environment variable so we can access that within the function. And then similarly as before, we've given it the bedrock permissions in the policy statement, but this time I've also given it S3 as well so we can upload items to it. Finally, before we actually look at writing our Lambda functions, what we want to make sure we do is install these two SDKs from AWS. So you can install these just by doing npm i AWS SDK client S3 and the same for client bedrock runtime, just so then they are in your project and you can use them in your Lambda functions. Um, so now we've looked at all of our resources and how we've defined them, let's actually go and look through the Lambdas themselves to see how they'll be generating these things for us. Let's start by going through the text handler. You can see here at the top, we define a new Bedrock Runtime Client, which is just pretty standard AWS SDK stuff. And then after initializing that SDK client, we actually then move into the handler itself and we define the body that we want to send in our request to the AI. So here we just have a prompt, which is just a pretty standard prompt I came up with, which is just write me a story about a car that goes on a journey to save a village. You can do probably much better. Let me know your prompts that you're going to use down in the comments. And here we have a bunch of kind of default parameters, which we saw in the playground where we have these options we can tinker with the AI. I've just left these as default. Again, you can play with these if you want. Then we have the kind of accept and the content type. In this case, we're going to be sending it JSON and we want JSON sent back to us. And then here we have the model ID, which is the model we're going to be using. 
In this case, we're using the code here, command text v14. You can change this as you want to, to generate different things. As you'll see with the image lambda, we'll be using a different model for that. One thing to bear in mind is if you do change the model, these will change as well. So your best bet is to go on the playground and you can look at the requests and then to get the properties that you need to set in the body to customize that. Then with our input defined, we can now actually send our request to AWS, which is what we do here. So we do client.send new invoke model command and then our input. Then once we get the response back from AWS Bedrock, we then pass it through our text decoder and decode uh, through the body. This then gives us um, data, which is in this structure here of generations object with finish region ID and text. This text is what we're interested in because this is the text that it generated for us. So what we do is we destructure generations here and then we literally just reply, respond from the Lambda, return from the Lambda with generations first item in the array dot text. You can probably do a bit more dish, probably loop over it and you can get the conversation going. But this, for our basic example, this works fine. And then that is our Lambda function. So we're now actually ready to deploy the Lambda function. I've already got it deployed, um, but you could now deploy this function and then you can run through it. So we'll invoke that in a second. But one thing I did want to quickly mention is that Bedrock is only available in a few set regions at the moment. Um, most commonly it's in US East 1. So even though this definitely isn't my closest region, it's the region I'm using um, just because it has the most models in it and it tends to get the newest features first and stuff. So if you're just playing around, I'd recommend just sticking to that region. Then once you have your function deployed, you can invoke it. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna invoke this through the AWS um, extension on VS Code. So you can see here, I've already previously invoked it. You can see here it's now generating me a response from the Lambda function. So we're just waiting for that to come back to us. And then you can see here it's now came back to us and here is the status code 200. And then here is the, the body of everything. So once upon a time, there was a small village, blah, 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 but you get the idea. Um, and that's the, the story that it's generated us from the prompt that I gave it. So you can see that is working fine. And then, um, course if I was to change the prompt that we gave it up here at the top it would generate me a different story um, you could probably change this to obviously take it in response to an API request or something like that we're not doing that in this video but just something you could do so you don't need to redeploy the lambda each time you want to change the prompt which is probably a good thing and with that we've sorted our text lambda so now let's go look at our image lambda it follows a very similar pattern, to be honest um, but of course we've added some extra complexity in there because we're going to be uploading the image to s3 so to start with, we um, initialize our Bedrock client and our S3 client, similar to what we did in the previous Lambda. We then bring in our S3 bucket name from the environment variables we passed in from our lib directory here, if you remember. Uh, we passed in the S3 bucket name here. Then um, we define the prompt that we're going to be giving it, developer making an application, ring a bell. We did developer making a website before, mixing up a bit. Then here we define the file name, which we want to store the image as on S3. So in this case, we're taking the prompt and then we're just replacing the spaces with underscores and making it all lowercase. Then we define our input. So in this case, we take the text prompts and then we pass our prompt to it. And as I mentioned before, because we've changed models this time, the stable diffusion model, the body parameters have also changed. So if we look at the previous one, you can see the prompt here was just a string. We had like max tokens, temperature, PK and all this. But over here now it's not um, prompt, it's text prompts, which is an array of prompts. So you can see the difference in that here, along with more different parameters here. Then um, similar to before, actually, we then do our invoke model command, which we then send through the bedrock line. But this then invokes the stable diffusion model to generate us a response. And then once we get a response from Bedrock, we actually go through a similar process. We do the text decoder decode response body and we pass that response. So then that gives us a reply, which is like this result string and then artifacts. And what we're interested in here is the base 64 here. This base 64 is our image. It's just been encoded in base 64. So what we're gonna do here is you can see we bring out our image base 64. We then decode the image in a buffer which then allows us to upload that to S3, which is what we do here with the put object command. We just give the S3 bucket name, the file name that we generated here at the top, and then decoded image, which is the buffer from the base64 image we had. Then we create our image URL, which is just the S3 bucket name to S3 Amazon AWS slash file name. 
which again, we generated at the top of the file. And then we just return the image URL out into the terminal. So then once you've deployed that to AWS, I've already gone ahead and done mine previously. Um, you can then invoke it. So let's invoke this one now quickly. So if we head again over to our AWS um, extension, you can see we've got the Lambda function here with the image. So we do invoke on AWS, just click invoke. You can see here, this is a previous um, invocation of it. So now it's just loading our response. And then here we've got the result for it. And you can see here, it gives us a payload with a status code of 200. And the body is just a the image URL from our S3 bucket, which is what we defined in our function. You could then go ahead and view this um, image in your browser. And when you view it, it will download it to your machine. So I've already gone ahead and done that. And you can see this is the image that it generated for us. And then if you wanted to, what you could do is you could head over to the S3 dashboard and you could validate that the image is in there. So as you can see here, I've got a S3 dashboard, which is just my bedrock SDK request image bucket. And you can see here it's developer making an image. And if you click on that, you obviously get some information about it. Um, but this is our image that we just created in our Lambda function. And that's it. Now we can see that our image has been uploaded to S3 and we viewed it locally and we know the text generation works. We have finished this tutorial. We now have two working Lambda functions that can generate both images and texts using the AWS SDK as well as AWS Bedrock. Um, if you're interested in reading more about how this all works as well as copying code snippets and getting a bit more in depth, I do have a blog post on my blog um which covers the entire process so there's one here which is for text uh, generating text and then i also have a, another one which is for image generation so make sure to go check these out they'll both be linked down in the description and if you're interested in reading the complete code then you can head over to my github which has um this will also be linked in the description this has all of the code for this project and it's the exact code i've walked through in this video um, from this repository so you can see here, this is the Bedrock SDK request one. If you go into the lib directory, it's the exact code that we used. So I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. Um, and until next time, thank you for watching. Bye.